Doctor, you are live. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Hello, can you hear us? Good morning, Doctor Kumar. Yeah. So this is this is yeah. We can hear you fine. Uh, okay. My name is Eric Orlick. We're in Miami. We see you well. We all liked your video. Yeah. Um, and I'm here with a great panel, and I understand you have a great case for us. So, without further ado, why don't we whip right to the uh, case presentation and see what you got? Okay. Yes. Thank you. I have a, a team of people here. Who is Dr. Shweta is uh, going to present the case. She is a pediatric cardiologist. I have Dr. Karnakar, my colleague, Dr. Srinivas Kumar, Mr. Anwar, cath lab technician, Sister Jyoti, Mr. Devender, and Dr. Samita anesthetist. So we are going to, doctor, I request Dr. Shweta to go ahead and present the case. So we are going to, doctor, I request Dr. Shweta to go ahead and present the case. Good morning everybody. So this is a clinical scenario of a baby who is 3 year old morning, cheerful everybody. boy so is who is weighing uh, 10 kg. 3 year old cheerful boy who is weighing three, uh, 10 kg. Uh, less than 5th centile for the required age. He presented to us with the history uh, of recurrent respiratory age. tract he infection and he had failure to thrive as, as his weight was just 10 kg for 3 years. So he so had on good. clinical examination 3 by 6 pan systolic murmur so and uh, mid diastolic murmur at the apex. Make diastolic murmur at the apex. This is his chest x ray, AP view, and it showed that there is a cytosolitis, levocardia, with uh, cardiomegaly, cardiothoracic ratio of 0.6, with LV apex, and increased lung vascularity. Then we performed transthoracic echocardiography, which showed that there is a membranomuscular VSD, which was measuring 6 mm, and LV to RV gradient of 75 millimeters of mercury with dilatation of left atrium and left ventricle. Left ventricular LV IDD Z score was plus 3, and there was no mitral regurgitation or RCC prolapse or aortic no regurgitation. His ECG showed that it was normal sinus rhythm with prominent left ventricular forces with deep Q waves in V5 and V6 suggestive of left ventricular volume overload. So here we are intended to close the VST with retrograde method because he had clinical indication of recurrent respiratory tract infection, delayed growth and step up of 10% from SVC to PA and QPQS of 2 is to 1 and LVIDD Z score of plus 3. Thank you very much. So we are here at this moment. We have a child of 3 years with failure to thrive. And we have a moderate to membranous VST with a posterior muscular extension. So we intend to close this particular VST using ADO2, that is amplage duct occluder second generation with the indigenously developed delivery system. So initially we have a arterial puncture. Can you please show here? So we have six French groin sheath in the femoral artery and there is a five French femoral vein sheath here. We performed a right heart study and the calculated QP by QS is 2 is to 1. The mean PA pressures are just 20 millimeters of mercury. So there is no significant pulmonary hypertension. We have performed the angiogram. Can you show the angiogram please? So you can see the angiogram, it is a little bit a hepatoclavicular equivalent, LAO 40 and cranial 37, initially we did in LAO 55 and cranial 20, we could not profile the ventricular septal defect and after performing the hepatoclavicular view, you can see that indicates that there is a posterior muscular extension here. The measured VSD is around 6 millimeters 
from the LV side and the tunnel diameter measures around 4 millimeters. So here we are going to close with amplager duct occluder second generation. So I would like to know the forum their panelists their any comments or suggestions from them or we will go ahead I would like to generate uh, some discussion at this point of view. Sure, I, I think that's a great idea. I think, uh, you know, when I saw that the case you were presenting, uh, initially the slides that were sent to us was a 12-year-old. I said, boy, I'm an adult cardiologist. What am I going to tell them about a 12-year-old? <laughs> now it's a 3-year-old. I can tell you there are a lot of very nervous adult cardiologists on the panel uh, when it comes to uh, commenting on your case. but. Uh, we do have some pediatric cardiologists. Um, I think indication is not an issue here. I mean, you've shown ventricular dilatation, atrial dilatation, normal pulmonary pressures. Yes. Frank, what do you what do you think? Uh, well, the child is more than. I don't think we. I don't think we have your mic on. Uh, actually, we are sorry for it. We initially wanted to present an adult, no, but the uh, patient uh, developed respiratory tract infection. That's why we changed this into a new other case. So we have a child more than three years. No, 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 no problem. I think this is a great case. I think we can all learn from it. Okay. So any child above one year. So so just give us one sec. Let's 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 get the panel in here. So okay, okay right. So just give us one sec. Let's get an opinion from uh, one of our pediatric cardiologists on the panel, and see what he has to say. Uh, the I'm going to repeat Frank's question because I think he's. I think there's trouble with his microphone. Maybe we can address that technically. But his question is: he wants more, uh, more as much information as you can provide about the anatomy, the distance from the aortic valve, whether there's yes. an aneurysm or not for the device to sit in. Yes, that's uh, Those are the types of questions that he has. And I'll add the additional question is. Can you switch over to echocardiogram? Please? We will show you the information on echo. We will give information, more information on echocardiographic data here. Uh, well, show the echo pictures. So, this is a four chamber view what we are seeing the ventricular septal defect. Show the color. So, you can see the moderate ventricular septal defect away from the aortic wall. However, in this particular view, aortic wall is not seen, but it is a quite uh, you can see the subiotic rim over there can you show the next picture so that's where the aortic wall whenever we profile the aortic wall the vst is uh, obviously not seen indicates that it is a posterior muscular extension next so that's the lv side which measures next you have short axis yeah so it's a Fairly moderate size, yeah, show that picture. Fairly so moderate sized uh, ventricular septal defect with the left ventricular left atrial dilatation and the G value of LV is measuring more than uh, 2.5 plus 2.5. So there are absolute indications which we feel <laughs> in this case since the child is more than one year of age and there is a failure to thrive and uh, less than fifth percentile of uh, body weight for the expected. So that's where we are. Yeah, yeah, I'm not questioning the indications. I, I, I'm okay with the indications. We're, I think we're all in agreement. My, my, again, my first, my first thought was that, um, you know, of course, we all know about the potential complications of um, these perimembranous device closures, which is going to create a, a, a potential problem on the aortic valve leaflets if you are impinged on that. Um, and of course, I think that the idea of using the amplex or ductal occluder is that you can fit the, uh, the, the retention disc inside uh, the, the VST almost using an aneurysm to hold it so that it doesn't get in the way of the aortic valve. Yes. That's the question in terms of how do you know that this is the right device for this lesion to avoid those complications? Yes. The aortic valve to VST, upper margin of the VST distance at least it should be 4 millimeters. We all know that amplage duct occluder second generation has got a three disc. One is 
a pulmonary artery disc, aortic disc and a central stem. So the disc on either side for a 6 millimeter duct occluder diameter is 12 millimeter whereas the radius is 6 millimeters. So even if you deploy the device in the VST, the minimum distance which we need from the aortic wall to the VST is around 4 millimeters. So the cases with a minimum of 4 millimeter distance from the aortic wall to the upper margin of the VST are the cases which are suitable for this particular device. Otherwise, we will be compromising on the aortic wall mechanisms and end up with uh, aortic regurgitation. So we meticulously assess, then only we thought we will be able to successfully close this case with the ADO2. So I think what we should do is I think you should get to work and I think what we're going to do is as you work and there's time, we're going to have a couple more questions from the panel because I know you have a hard out at 11.57. Yeah. So I think, you should, I think you should start to work. Okay. Okay. All right. So what we have done so far, we after, after taking the right heart study, sampling and the angiogram, we have taken a delivery system here. Can you show this delivery system? This is the delivery system which we designed to deploy the ADO2. We have a groin sheath of six French and we have taken the six French launcher catheter here. This launcher catheter of five French has got internal diameter of o, o, uh, 0.68 inches. Whereas the launcher catheter of six French which has got 071 inch diameter. So, the ADO2, the last size is 64 or 66, easily can go even through the 5 French guiding catheter. However, we have taken 6 French guiding catheter to perform the angios and to check the pressures through the side arm. So, you have a Y connector, Tohibis Y connector here connected to the launcher catheter, and I have a guide wire, glide wire, a thermo company placed in position. So, that is what we are. So I am going to demonstrate how we cross the VST with this technique. So we are going to cross the VST from the uh, LV with the glide wire keeping the catheter in the ascending aorta at the sinotubular junction. So we have a guiding catheter here, please go to ascending aorta. As adult cardiologists are there, basically it is a right so coronary we guide. We, uh, now you can see the glide wire which is positioned in the LV apex. What I do generally, we can slightly scrape the interventricular septum here. Could we go big on the fluoro please? Blow the fluoro up the whole way. Fluoro bigger. Show the tip of the catheter. And what are you probing with? A glide, a four French glide this, catheter, this or is a glide wire. wire, or is that just a wire? Yeah. No, but I would, I would, the wire is never going to go across without... Just a glide wire, no catheter. No, 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 he's got a beautiful way to go through. Uh, while you work, uh, Saibo, you had a question. No, actually, um, I didn't comment. Actually, I looked at the angiogram and then the echo. You can see clearly that the BSD is extending more posteriorly. Now you see you it do, is crossed. When you get to the five-chamber view, you don't see the BSD rail. When you get to the four-chamber view, you see the BSD, which, which clearly shows that there is a tissue of below the aortic valves and they shouldn't impinge the aortic valves. So I think that's a good case. And I actually like this technique that he does. I've done a case with him very nice where he keeps the so catheter what the I, extending what I, aorta. What I you have don't done, have to go into the LV. See you this just particular curve the wire and you should cross mm, So what I have done, I gently manipulated the glide wire along the ventricular septum so that the glide wire can float along the stream of the ventricular septal defect. By this technique, you can unnecessarily avoid the cannulation of the ventricular septal defect and then you can avoid the injury to the conduction system probably which is uh, closely located to the membranous defect. 
so now our glide wire is in the deep in the pulmonary artery and we have a guiding catheter which is located in the transfer arch and then to ascending aorta we are going to gently insert negotiate the guide catheter into the right ventricle we are going to give a little bit clockwise rotation at this moment so that we can avoid unnecessary trauma to the ventricular septum just go gently so we have side arm we have side arm here to check the pressures now my so pressures are right so ventricular pressure here i can either park the catheter in the pulmonary artery or in the right ventricular body i think this is a really good position we are middle below the moderator band and our catheter is going to be well positioned and is going to be very well stabilized so we are ready to deploy the device if you permit us sure does anyone have any other comments uh, yeah so uh, i was wondering if uh, rotational angiography and some sort of dynasty could help in positioning and so also to get the relationship between the aortic valve and the vsd any there's a question about the use of other imaging so like yeah. uh, dynasty or rotational angiography with another system do you ever use that for vsd closure uh, no, no we we have never used vsd closure rotational angiography however okay. we have biplane and sometimes we use rao in case of outflow vsds but i believe that rotational angiography certainly will give some three dimensional picture and view in relation to the surrounding valves so what i have done i have taken an artery flow i'm going to ask a question as well so let, let me yeah. i'm just going to ask one other question so some people would say you know maybe you should put in a four french arterial sheath cross with a wire snare exteriorize and deliver it from the from the venous side to avoid the larger access and a small child arterial access any thoughts on that yes we have done several times the conventional anti grade method forming an arteriovenous venous loop there are lot of disadvantages in small children forming the arterial venous loop the formation of the loop cannulation of the catheter snaring of the wire and negotiation of the sheath all these various steps are involved each step has got its own disadvantages and usually the glide wire or noodle wire will grow to the tricuspid valve operator system and it will be caught in one of the uh, cordae or papillary muscles so several times i experienced that these patients may develop hemodynamic uh, compromise and some hypotension bradycardia and you need to have two operators to do all this procedure so that's why we came with an idea to close this this kind of vsts using a single catheter retrograde technique so here we are not forming the arterial venous loop we are going to directly deploy the device from the right ventricular side to the left ventricular side Can I ask a question? Um, I know that you don't have a TE probe or ICE probe. Are you routinely doing this just with angiography and no echo guidance? No, That's except right. muscular ventricular septal defect. Right. All membranous VSTs they need trans thoracic or trans esophageal echocardiogram. We have performed close to 160 VST device closures, and we found the VSTs can be equally profiled well. with a trans thoracic echocardiogram so in the small babies doing a trans esophageal echocardiogram you need to have general anesthesia and you have to use a smaller probes and sometimes actually it confuses the view trans thoracic view is really very good in four chambers short axis and subdivided view and long axis views will really profile the membranous vsts very well so we do this procedures under intravenous anesthesia and sedation we don't do intubation general anesthesia in these cases whereas grown up kids about 16 years we don't use any of intravenous anesthesia we'll give local anesthesia and do trans thoracic echo in adults we invariably do trans esophageal echocardiogram 
Okay, so why don't you continue at this point? So, okay, well, uh, we are going to show you the device first, then load it, then we'll take various steps. So, can you please open the delivery system? We'll take the delivery cable and device, please. Five twenty grind sheet. Yes. I think so uh, this employee duct occluder two comes with a delivery system, but this delivery system has got lot of uh, disadvantages. This we so we found that uh, this uh, sheet itself will injure the groin. Hence we changed our technique to use the a uh, regular groin sheet. Over that we'll take the guiding catheter. So this uh, cable is uh, designed only to deploy this. Amplager duct occluder 2. So here we are showing the duct occluder 2 second generation. You can see the numbers 6 to 4. 6 is the central waste diameter, whereas 4 is the length of the device. So you have an incremental number so from 3, 4, 5, 6, whereas lengths of 4 and 6 lengths in each diameter. So we have chosen the diameter 6, that is number 1, the VST size is 6, whereas the length is 4 because the septal thickness is lesser than 4 millimeter. Hence, we thought this is the appropriate device for this particular case. So, I'll, I'd like to show you the device here. Please focus. The sheet which is taken is a uh, is a regular sheet. So. so this is the. I think okay. There Eric, we go. Yeah, able we'll, to see we'll it? just show you in a second. Eric, yeah, uh, You know this is retrograde. Let them look. After you load the device, we have a question. So the device can be loaded using the. A commercially available loader, it comes along with the delivery sheet or you can alternatively load into a 5 French groin sheet. So this is what here, a 5 French groin sheet because it has got a side arm, you can flush it. So this is what the device which has got a central waste, central waste, I, I need to stretch it, probably I will use artificial. So you can uh, clearly see this, a central waste of uh, 6 millimeter diameter and 4 millimeter, 4 millimeter length and two sides a uh, retention disc, RV disc and LV disc, the diameter of the disc are 12 millimeter with a radius of 6. So I am going to load into the a loader which is custom made here. So we load it just to withdraw, just to flush it. We are de airing the system here. So there are obviously Very different good. ways to do this. Some people would do that underwater yeah. uh, for most of the uh, for most of the loading process. Yeah. Um, and you've chosen not to use the sheet that comes with the device. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we have a question from Cyber Car. Hi, hi Srinivas Nagarshan. Uh, I did learn this technique, very nice technique of retrograde crossing by keeping the catheter in the air, sending order, which I think is a really good technique. Yeah. Uh, one of the problems in the U.S. is we don't have the ADO2 available. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, the ADO2 is only available, can go through a six French guide catheter. But the problem is we only, the smallest we can use the muscular BSD. Mm -hmm. And the muscular VSD requires a six or eight French sheet, so you will have to use a eight French guiding catheter to do this procedure. But I, I do agree that the retrograde technique is very simple. Yes. It's actually a very straightforward procedure. Yeah, the ADO2. Why don't you Why don't you proceed? ADO2 is commercially designed for Close the duct occlusion. Yeah. So we are using here off label. So I just opened right. this and then Sorry, advancing the delivery system into delivery system. Yeah. 
I have a quick question. You know, my experience with this device is limited to the PDA when we were going through the trials. I noticed that when we were using this in the PDA, that center waist uh, doesn't always sit where you want it to sit. Are you planning to put that center waist on the left side? In other words, leaving the retention disc on the right side and the middle part and the left side onto the left yeah. side of the ventricle. Where good, do you plan uh, to put that middle part question. of the waist since there's no tube there? Yeah, this is a very good uh, technical question. The central waist should always be released in the left ventricular side. The left ventricular pressures are systemic pressures which actually pushes the central waist to get accommodated in the VST or aneurysmal sac. If you deploy the central waist in the right ventricular side, you will have a device which is freely moving in the right ventricle. So we should not be doing in this procedure with this device we should be deploying the central waist in the left ventricle or within the aneurysmal sac. So we are here. I'm going to deploy the... Uh, one more question. Since these devices... Yeah, go ahead. One more question. Since these devices come in different lengths, I'm assuming you're picking the shortest length possible. Is that right? Yes. There are two lengths available. One is a four millimeter length. The second is six millimeter length. If you have a muscular VST and the thickness of the septum is uh, close to 6 millimeter or more, probably the 6 length is going to be useful. Since this is a membrane of muscular septum, we thought we will close with a 4 millimeter length here. So if you look at the echocardiogram, the device okay, is... Okay, can we just go full screen? Echo. Yeah, can we go full screen on the fluoro and the echo, please? And can you zoom also, because that would help us see everything. We'd like to see the fluoro as well. Flora. Yeah, we'd like to see the fluoroscopy, yeah. the x-ray pictures as well. Yeah. You can do that 50-50 if you'd like. Yeah. yeah, that's good. And if you could zoom on the fluoro, that would be good. Yeah. So we see the echo nicely. So the device is just below the moderator band. Generally, we don't deploy below the moderator band. I'll just pull just above the moderator band as yes, yeah. we are there. No, it is coming. So I have deployed the RV disc. Yeah, you just popped up. Could you just zoom up on the floor, please? Floor bigger. Zoom so the floor. You can see the. Device RV disc is freely within the That's RV. That's good. Beautiful. So I am going to deploy the central waist at this moment. Coming on to the LV and then releasing the central waist. So that's a central waist. Then what we do here, we we'll just push the catheter, otherwise your LV disc, LV disc will come across the... Yeah, that's where we go. So we have deployed the device. Can you please show the color, please? Yes, there is a significant reduction of the shunt. The this particular device doesn't have any polyester fabric. So that's the reason that the central leak will persist for half an hour, 30 minutes to 60 minutes, and di disappears generally. Most of the 99 percent of the cases the shunt will disappear within one to two hours a time. So what our policy is, we will examine the child clinically on table and we will confirm that there should not be any murmur. So I am quite happy with the device position and I am going to perform an angiogram here, Dr. Srinivas Kumar. So Dr. Shweta, can you please assess the relation to the yeah. other valves? Yeah. So here I am going to see how the device has been positioned across the ventricular septal defect. As we have already discussed, the RV disc we want it to be let's on. Let's make the echo. Let's echo bigger. Let's make the echo the full screen, please. Let's just make the echo the full screen, just because it's a little tiny corner of the screen for us now. If we're looking at the echo, let's just blow the whole thing up. Yeah, that's perfect. This is okay. Yeah. Is yeah, perfect. Yeah, so I will assess in four chamber 
the five chambered long axis and short axis so this is modified four chamber to five chamber view where i have to see where the uh, rv side of the rv side of the device is lying i want it to approximate completely to the ventricular septum so that i should not see any rocking movement that shows that it is completely attached and adhered to the ventricular septum then the middle disc and the lv side it should lie down on the lv side like we have discussed just now so as we can see the rocking movement of the rv disc is not there that is quite satisfactory for the position of the device and then i'll do the short axis where i will see that the position is exactly covering the ventricular septal defect actually so there is a little bit of aortic regurgitation that is due to catheter across the aortic wall so we'll confirm that in the echocardiogram that device is not entrapping the aortic wall that is very important so what we can see here that lv disc is away from the aortic wall and uh, it is just uh, because of our catheter which is hitting the aortic wall and once we deploy it will be settled down and so we are, long we are going to perform the angiogram at this moment C can i ask a quick question yeah, yeah. can i ask a quick question yes please yes. so i i can i mean so you see some new aortic insufficiency you're saying that this is because of the catheter cross the valve Yes. How do you know that's the case and how do you know that's not because of the device? Yes, that is a very good question. By echocardiogram, so we to should... So I can see this as being one of the disadvantages of going retrograde. Yes, the echocardiogram should confirm that aortic wall is not getting entra entrapped within the device that we confirmed in a long axis view as well as the four chamber view. So we'll do an angiogram as well here. Please remove your hand. Okay, do you enjoy? Okay, I think Andrew is okay. You just advance everything uh, a little uh, bit uh, forward, uh, is that right? Or you're going to advance everything forward? Or? Yeah. Yeah, we are going to do an angiogram. It's here. kind of an aorto-ventriculogram then. Yeah. Well, now, but how, do you, how are you going to tell that the AI is not from the catheter being pushed too far in? Yeah. The disc and aortic wall in the echocardiogram away. The aortic wall is not entrapped within the disc. We will repeat the echocardiogram in four chamber view. Just to confirm the uh, aortic wall regurgitation. Color? To the peristone long axis also, you can yeah. see the relationship with the aortic valve in the right. Now, I just pushed the device within the LV to show you separately the aortic wall and the device. Show that. Show the aortic wall and the device separately. So, the cable actually pulls the device, catheter pulls the device. This is the ideal is position the to valve. deploy this particular case. Now it's seen very case. well actually. Aortic valve is away from the device. This I is think the you can see it very well now. That the aortic yeah, just valve show is now. Color? Yeah. Yeah, we agree with that actually. I, I think it's no. not. I, I think it's pretty clear that it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty okay. hard to have a big a sheath across yeah. the valve and not have a little bit of AI. Yeah, yeah. So Absolutely. I think that looks fine. So the device... You can even confirm that with a parasternal long axis. Yeah, yeah you can I will uh, do just that. To f confirm that the parasternal long axis view. Okay, color it. Show the echo picture. Okay. Now there is a... The echo. Yeah. Can we see the echo a little bit bigger, please? Yeah, there is a trace aortic regurgitation. That is not due to the device, which is the cable which is pushing. 
Okay. Okay. So I know what your point is. So are you are you happy to go for release? Yeah, I, I think I'll just uh, do an angiogram to convince you people about the position of the device here once, and then we'll go ahead and deploy the device. So that's where it is a little bit of shunt is there. Well, the angiogram clearly shows that the device is not close to the valve. Yes. Yeah. So we'll release. deploy the device. Yeah. Yeah. The angiogram is quite convincing actually that it's, it's quite true. So we have deployed the device. For the completion check we can do the uh, an alternatively left ventricular angiogram. We'll first do an echocardiogram and show you the aortic regurgitation at this moment. So you can see the. That device. looks quite good so far, for sure. So this is Color? the device. So there is no aortic regurgitation. However, you can see a trivial shunt which is seen there that is intra device and it will soon subside. I, I may request my colleague to auscultate also sometime. Yeah, you can see the device well positioned, either side of the VST, the right ventricular disc on right ventricle side, left ventricular disc on left ventricular side. Can you please apply color CFM Doppler? Fantastic. Go to long you axis. Know, sometimes you know, sometimes when you ask the echo person to auscultate, they get insulted. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> so this is away from the thing. <laughs> Gain increase. Yeah, you can see the device very nicely. Color, please. I would like to take some questions if there are anything in the form. Most of these kind of VSTs, there will be RVOT turbulence because of some kind of RVOT reaction and uh, 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 RVOT muzzle bundle formation due to ventricular septal defect. It's uh, an early double chambered right ventricular kind of uh, physiology they develop and you will have a short murmurs and color flow turbulence, however you don't see any kind of shunt. Here also I am finding little bit of turbulence across the RVOT, however I don't think there is a ventricular septal defect residual shunt at this moment. We are going to do uh, a angiogram. Uh, I'd like to take some questions and I request Srinivas Kumar to go to other lab. Um, maybe we can ask the panel, has anyone closed the VSD using this technique before? Yes, I've actually done a case like this. It actually works very nicely. Cross with the wire, yes. with a guide above. And I learned it from uh, Nagashwar. Oh, he's okay. done okay. I've done okay. cases. Yeah, I can okay. hear you, Saibal. Nice to hear what you. What about uh, Nagashwar? How are you? Yeah, he's good. Thank you, Saibal. Nice yeah. to hear you. So thanks for treating. That, that is a great demonstration. Thanks for teaching me this technique. We didn't see the HP APG, but I'm wondering, uh, for those that are using uh, the ESOS 2, this device, uh, for the remembrance of VSD. Uh, how is the outcome uh, regarding the AV block yeah. eventually? Yeah. This so, I mean, Dr. Honorado was just asking about AV block. Could you show us your physio monitor while you're... Could you show us a picture of the physio monitor? We just want to see the ECG, and then maybe you could talk about what your experience has been with this device for perimembranous VSD in terms of heart block. So, we are going to show you the ECG here. So we, we have done close to 110 cases using ADO2. The initial data published in CAT Cardiovascular Journal and now the recent data with mean follow-up of 36 months, which is accepted for publication in JAP, Journal of American College of Cardiology, which will come in uh, uh, two, three issues later. And the data is quite clear and showing that there are no significant conduction defects and we don't find any AV blocks. The reason for this Number one, the technique, we are taking all precautions to 
prevent the damage to the conduction system and the device is this is 144 wire night in all double braid double umbrella disc device which is highly flexible soft and which can be easily accommodated within the aneurysmal tissue and also there is no polyester fabric which is one of the reason for the tissue reaction and chronic inflammation even if you oversize the defect you have a length of the device which is 4 millimeters and connected by two separate discs so even if you oversize there is a possibility that the device can be stretched easily so we understand and we found that this is a good device and which prevents which actually no longer a risk factor for the complete heart block in 56 cases of membranous ventricular septal defects any other questions from the panel? I have a quick question I think this is a very creative technique and I've learned something here uh, my question is um, Given the options of, of this technique versus the traditional coming from the right side, can you give us some guidance as to when you would use this? I mean, it sounds like you're using this a lot, but when would you go to the, uh, the traditional technique? Are there any contraindications to using this technique? Yes. When I have a larger defect, number one, when yes. I cannot when put I more than six French sheet defect, here, when one, I'm going to use to seven or eight French sheet in a small baby, baby then obviously, will perform an arterial venous loop and then go from the venous side. Recently we found a different technique going from the foramen of ovale and then close the defects avoiding the arterial puncture. Then alternatively if you have a mid muscular or apical muscular and anterior muscular in some cases this retrograde technique is going to be difficult because of the your delivery catheter passing through the arch of the aorta ascending aorta into left ventricle and then to the right ventricle is going to be little bit more tortuous and we found that there will be some hemodynamic compromise in smaller babies so in those individuals probably transjugular approach or transfemoral approach if it is anterior muscular VST in a larger defect is useful. So by and large whenever we have a case which is amenable to close with ADO2 or your femoral artery accepts your delivery sheath up to 6 or 7 frames probably this is a very good method. Thank you. I mean, I think this is just a great demonstration of how, you know, how there's so much to learn from so many different people all over the world about just little technical things. The device is the same. Uh, use a different device than the device that's made for this. You do it in a different way. It works out beautifully. You have a large experience. It's a published experience. That was a great demonstration of this technique. I mean, it's phenomenal. One of the greatest things about CCT is watching other people work at home, in their own labs, their own staff, their own equipment, and you did that absolutely beautifully today. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate you. Hello? 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 We are going to next lab. Dr. Srinivas Kumar is demonstrating the coartation of aorta in an adult 35 years a gentleman. Coartation of aorta in an adult 35 years a gentleman. Okay. Uh, can, can we quickly, briefly have the history of slides of the patient? Hi, good morning. Yeah, morning. From Miami. Yeah. Can we briefly have the history of slides of the patient? Yeah, morning. Yeah. yeah. Can we have, we have about nine and a half minutes yeah, we'll quickly of satellite time left. Yeah, just uh, to have it, make yeah, the history we'll brief, is a, here is a 26-year-old yeah, uh, male gentleman. Yeah. So, good morning, everybody. Here is a 26-year-old gentleman weighing 70 kg with clinical presentation of headache, dyspnea, and NYHA class 2 symptoms in the last six months. With the, with the clinical examination finding of radiofemoral delay, 
and shot EDM at the left third intercostal space with the BP difference between upper and lower limb over 70 mm Hg. Next slide please. Uh, the X-ray typically shows the feature of rib notching. We did the CT scan with the 256 slide scanner that uh, shows the extent as well as the delineate the coarctation segment very nicely. That shows the extent as well as the delineate the coarctation segment very nicely. Next. And this is the line diagram that shows all the measurement. The distance of the coax segment from the subclavian is around 30 mm and it's a very critical coax with the dimension measure only 3 mm. The transverse arch measures 14 and the descending out at the diaphragm measures around 14 mm. The transverse arch measures 14 and the descending out at the diaphragm measures around 14 mm. The hemodynamic data shows the gradient of around 70 mm Hg in the uh, angiogram just now we taken with the upper limb pressure of 220 and the lower limb of, of 150. With the upper limb pressure of 220 and the lower limb of now we'll go to the angio pictures what we did just now. Now we'll go to the angio pictures what we did just now. Uh, this is the first time we go to the right radial. That shows the GR in the coarctation. That shows very critical coarctation. So we are not able to go from the descending outer to the ascending outer. So we decided to go to cross with the right radial approach. Next. With the GR, we cross with the thermo wire and the thermo wire is snared uh, and we get out through the uh, right femoral artery. You can saw this is the crossing of the coarctation segment with the thermo wire. And this is the snaring process where we hold the wire, we snare the wire and we get out from the right femoral artery. Where we hold the wire, we snare the wire and we get out from the right femoral artery. This is the pigtail we mounted over the thermo wire across the coarctation segment. Next. This is the pigtail we mounted over the thermo wire across the coarctation segment. Next please. Next please. Next please. Ah, yes sir. This, this uh, pigtail end shows a very tight coarctation. The distal end is not, the distal uh, DA is not very clear from this end. So we took the next end. Right? DA is not very clear from this end. This is the LAO view shows the same with the distance of the coarctation segment from the lead subclave around 30 mm. With the distance of the coarctation segment from the lead subclave around 30 mm. You just have to get a couple of side holes a little bit more distal. Yes, sir. Just so we are but not able to get the good the pictures here. Yes, so we did the one angiogram from the we right radial approach. Here. So we did the one angiogram from the right radial approach. You can see this. You can see this. Oh. Yeah. So now we are at the a, position where we cross Do you have this picture in the, another view besides AP? Do you have it in like an LAO? Position where we cross the... Pardon? Pardon? I was just wondering if you had that picture in like the same LAO projection so you'd have a bit a bit more sense of the length of it. But I mean if you don't have it, it's, it's LAO? at this point. Can you show the LAO? We took the uh, angio in three views, LAO, LAO as well as the lateral as well as the AP to delineate the coarctation. Okay. So now with over the implants of wire, we place in the right subclavian artery. Over that we are crossing with the mullein sheet. Place in the right subclavian artery. Over that we are crossing with the mullein sheet. Twelve French mullein sheet we took. What French sheet are you using? Uh, and what French. size balloon are you using? Twelve French mullein sheet we are using. So we have twelve French sheet here mullens, which is a cook's so make. We have twelve French sheet here mullens, which is a cook's make. So our intended procedure is to. You have about four and a half minutes of. Uh, you have about. You have about four and a half minutes left. So we are going to. So, so wh while you're doing this, can I ask? We are going to. Yeah, our intended procedure is to do the covered stenting. Can you? Our intended procedure is to do the covered stenting. Uh, 
Could you zoom on the fluoroscopy for us, please? At this point, we don't. At this point, we don't need to see the hands. Just the fluoroscopy, please. The full screen. Go to yellow. Go to yellow. Twenty-two max. Twenty-two max. So we are just finding a little bit of resistance at this level. We are just finding. Uh, gently moving, gently manipulating my sheath. Gently moving, gently manipulating my sheath. Yeah, we are almost in the transfer arch at this Beautiful. moment. We can uh, probably remove the dilator at this moment. We can probably remove the dilator at this moment. So we thought to cover entire thing, a largest length of a covered stent, a CP stent, Chetam platinum stent, uh, which we have chosen. At this moment, the covered stents which are available in our country, one is CP cover stent, second is Advanta V12. We, we are not choosing Advanta V12 here. Because of the radial forces, radial strength of Advanta is a little bit lesser than the covered CP stand. So we are going to open the BIB balloon, so balloon in I balloon. So we have about two and a half minutes left. Right. I don't want you to rush. I want you to do the best thing for the patient. So just. Do things, do things at the normal course, and if we don't get to see it, I'm sure we'll see it uh, at some point later in the meeting. So uh, we'd be happy to watch you prep and prepare, but you know what I mean? We only have about two minutes left of satellite time. So, All right. So we, we, our plan is to mount the right. covered stent so on 7 into 15 BIB balloon. The length of the balloon is 50 millimeters, whereas the stent is... 45 centimeters, uh, 45 millimeter stand. So we are going to inflate with inner balloon of seven diameter, and then stabilize the stand. Then we'll dilate with the outer balloon of 15 millimeters. So we would like to show you the stand, and then you can probably ask a question. That is going to be the final. So this is what the BIB balloon, which has got uh, three ports. Does anyone? This is what the yeah. BIB balloon, which has got uh, three ports. And yeah. a covered uh, CP stent uh, here. It's covered uh, CP stent here. All right. So we would like to ask any question. So we would like to ask any question. I have a quick question now. This is Frank King. So I see that you're using a cover stent because of how severe this is, but this is also next to the subclavian. Can you make a comment on how you're going to position this to avoid, let's say, obstructing the subclavian flow? Uh, number one, we are definitely going to position the stent at least to 50% of the subclavian artery. And when you inflate the stent, there will be 20% of foreshortening of the stent. So our position is going to be almost 50 to 60 percent of the subclavian and then we will deploy the stent there. Alternatively, studies have found that unilateral okay. closure of the subclavian is not going to compromise on the subclavian flow. I just want to tell you that we're going to have to go, yeah. but I want to tell you how great your transmissions were. You have great cases, and you did be a beautiful job, and you showed us a lot of great things today, and thank you very, very much. Thank we you. appreciate it very much. Thank, thank you very much. Bye. So, Mike, this so, is I think we have a couple of minutes. Does anyone else want to make a comment, by the way, on that?